So last week I finished this Netflix show. It's called On My Block. And if I were to describe it, I would say it's like Kendrick's Good Kid Mad City, but the Latino version, if it was a CW show. I think it's an okay show. I think it's got some pretty enjoyable characters, but what really stood out to me, what really got me was that ending. So if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. You can go check it out uh, for those of you who don't really care about it. The main thing that I want to talk about is how this okay show to me has me making a video because of that ending but it's about how they actually pulled off that ending, what they did to lead up to it that I really want to talk about. Pretty much it's a show about these kids living in the inner city. They're surrounded by gangs, which is completely normal to them. Tax time, bitches. Shit, Latrell. Hands up, money out. How can we take our money out with our hands up? And while the main struggle throughout the show is them trying to figure out how they're going to get their friend out of being sucked into a gang, it's also super lighthearted. These kids are also starting off high school, so there's all this team drama going on. One of them spends like practically the entire season trying to find a pot of gold. The other's main concern is setting up a quinceañera. And then you have, you have this chick. Blah, 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 blah. And yet, as comedic as it is, and like I said, kind of CW-ish, there's always that impending doom because they're living in this gang-filled city. And it ends up catching you off guard, mainly because you're watching a show full of this. I'm gonna teach you. I'ma teach you. I'ma teach you. And it ends on this literal shot. And while I'm breaking down a comedy drama and how it shifts from that comedy to the drama, there's a bunch of other genres that do that shift, right? In order to really emphasize on that certain emotion. And I think director Alex Garland, who did the films Ex Machina, Annihilation, describes it perfectly when he talks about how he leads up to his crazy sci-fi stuff. If what you want to do is is end in a place that is strange, that is truly strange. Um, uh, the means by which you get there become very important. And if you start something strange, so not in suburbia, which let's take suburbia as, as representing not strange, um, although of course it is. That's a reach, but yeah. Sure. Um, uh, what you find is that strangeness has a diminishing return. Um, we, we, we're sort of proximity-based creatures and we get acclimatized to a state quite quickly. And so by the end of the film, what was strange is no longer strange, it's just the landscape in which you exist. And so it felt like it needed to be a progression from something. And that to me is the main perspective. That's what I want to talk about. Because if you're a filmmaker, if you're an author, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, whatever it is, if you want to maximize a certain emotion, right? Sadness, comedy, whatever it is, you have to lead up to it. Because you know when you see a movie that starts off with a bunch of action CGI, which is cool, but then in the middle of it, there's more action CGI, which is fine, but then that's followed by bigger action CGI, and by the end of the movie, your mind is just CG fried? Well, like Alex Garland says, it's because, you know, we're smart enough. We we're watching something, and if there's no progression, our minds just get used to it. Our minds get numb to it. So with a show like On My Block, the point is that they're getting you used to all of the fun and games, all of this, I will say it again, CW-ishness until they boys in the hood you. That's why I'm making a video on the show because of how unrelenting the ending was, right? I thought the whole series was just okay, but I'm still thinking about that ending and how they were able to pull it off because I can guarantee you a drama does something like this, it doesn't hit you as hard. But because it's a comedy, you're falling more in love with the characters in a very lighthearted way. And that's what makes the ending way more impactful, way more unexpected. That's why the emphasis on the main struggle that they're facing, dealing with gangs, is so powerful. Because everything can be fine and dandy until you deal with someone you shouldn't, and it ends up hurting those around you. I think a lot of other Netflix originals do this well when they deal with the tone shift. Fundamentals of Caring, I think, hits really hard whenever they stop being sarcastic. Everything Sucks focuses on kids, which is why I think that episode 8 is super heart-wrenching. Even Haters Back Off, which I'm not saying that I've, I've binged, I'm not saying it's the greatest show out there. But still, that ending, because of the tone shift, is pretty effective. Bojack Horseman's absurdity is why I think it handles the topics of suicide, depression, and drug abuse way better than any other show that takes itself too seriously. And I think that these shows, besides having you waste like an entire box of Kleenex when you're watching it, it's an important lesson, right? Like seeing how they progress in the show and how they're able to maximize that emotion. It's something that you can learn from because, you know, I think comedies do it the best considering the fact that they're they're very lighthearted, you're getting sucked into the characters, and they kind of treat the drama like salt, right? They're able to just sprinkle it in there not too much, but it's effective, right? It's like when you're dealing with close-ups in a movie, you can tell a bad filmmaker doesn't know how to use them because if the point of it is for emphasis and they're overdoing it, they're completely missing the point. It's like with great plot twists, right? The whole point of a great twist, one of the parts of it, 
is that you don't know there's a twist. So I'm not saying that movies like The Notebook are bad because they're not, but you're going into it knowing that you're gonna cry, right? It's already expected. I like some M. Night Shyamalan movies, but I'm aware that when I go see a new movie of his, I'm just waiting for that game of Twister to pop out. But it's comedy series like this one where they suck you in with these characters and they have you thinking that everything's all right, only to deliver this heart-wrenching message about gun violence right at the end that I believe hits harder than any heavy-handed message about it can ever do. And leaves you wondering why the heck Netflix doesn't have that second season out yet. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have any other like great examples of that tone shift, you know, of being able to go from a comedy to a drama or you know, normal to crazy size fight action, whatever it is, if you get what I'm talking about, name it down below. Um, because there's another one that I would mention. I know a lot of people hate this movie, but there's a movie called Remember Me, and I know a lot of people think it's manipulative. I've seen a bunch of reviews talking about how the ending of it just comes out of nowhere, and that's the point for me. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it, but I mean, I think it, it kind of highlights the um. The, the fact that it's not so much a twist, but the fact of how unexpected things can come out of nowhere and just like, yeah, just change everything for you. But on a lighter note, I do want to bring up the upcoming Doc 10 Film Festival as well as C2E2. So if you're a Chicago native and you want to meet up, definitely hit me up on Twitter. Let me know and we can meet up there. If you're watching this in the future, I'll probably be going to the Doc 10 Film Festival as, as, as well as C2E2 next year as well or the following year, whatever. But just hit me up on Twitter. We can go. We can hang out there as well as... Hit up Gene and Jutes. <laughs>